The next speaker will be Richard Barr. He is a professor of radiology at Northwest Ohio Medical University, and he published more than 100 peer reviewed paper in unbelievable number. He also gives a lot of scientific talks worldwide, and he will give now today a lecture about the comprehensive breast elastography. Richard, it's your talk. Uh, thank you, Dirk. <clears throat> so, um, we've had uh, the ability to use the uh, new probe uh, for almost a year now doing some cases, um, and I'd like to re review what we've done uh, in terms of elastography. If I can figure out how to get my slides to move. There we go. Um, I do have many disclosures. I have uh, collaborate with the most ultrasound companies um, as well as uh, the ultrasound drug uh, manufacturers. So um, as Dr. Kinkle said, this is a new state-of-the-art probe and it gives us a complete solution for breast imaging. Um, it's called the EL184 Pure Wave Transducer. Um, it gives us a full solution for elastography, so we now have both strain and shear wave on one probe. Um, it also has an anatomical intelligence for breast imaging, which the next speaker will speak about, and it allows us to do precision biopsies. Um, this uh, new probe has an elevation focus uh, for very thin slice and uniformity. It's a 50 millimeter array length um, breakthrough high frequency pure wave transducer. It's integrated with EM tracking, which the next speaker will talk about, and it's designed to support strain elastography, shear wave elastography, as well as contrast enhanced ultrasound uh, of the breast. Um, as Dr. Kinkle said, we have exceptional detail and resolution in uniform tissues. Um, we do have the widescreen availability um, as well as doing uh, panoramic views, and I think Dr. Kinkle did an excellent job at describing those uh, B-mode uh, findings, and again, a panoramic view, again, with this very high uh, resolution. Um, other advanced applications, again, we'll talk about elastography a little more. I think it, uh, in our practice, elastography is done on every patient that has a mass, uh, and we have found it uh, markedly uh, improving our care to these patients and eliminating the need for unnecessary biopsies. And an image on the right, I think the, one of the questions that came up was the looking at needle visualization. And you can see, again, with this nice uh, thin uh, elevational focus, we can see the needle uh, very well and uh, position the needle uh, wherever we like in the lesion to get an appropriate specimen. Um, again, um, on uh, the EPICS, we always had strain elastography, but now with this new probe, we have the addition of two, 2D shear wave elastography. Um, an example on the left shows you a benign fibroadenoma. Uh, we have a scale uh, here in kilopascals, um, which shows that this lesion is uh, about uh, 20 to 25 kilopascals in the normal range and was a benign fibroadenoma at biopsy. Uh, the lesion on the right, you can see the red and yellow areas, uh, which has a, a kilopascal reading of approximately 100 uh, kilopascals and corresponds uh, to an invasive ductal cancer. One of the big problems, uh, though, with shear wave elastography is that it's a well-known fact that many uh, cancers show up as soft or blue cancers on shear wave, and this is not a function of a given manufacturer. It occurs with all manufacturers, uh, and it's a problem uh, of the uh, histology uh, of the breast cancers. They're often very stiff, and they do not allow for adequate shear waves uh, to be generated, um, and we sometimes either get no signal, which would be no color coding, or they may show up as being soft. In our experience, this happens in approximately 25% uh, of cases. So uh, unfortunately, that would give us a, a false negative, which we uh, is a not acceptable uh, for breast imaging. Um, oftentimes, we have a very high intensity ring around the lesion, uh, which helps us uh, to confirm uh, that it is a cancer. Um, and another addition that I don't show here is we now have a quality map on the 2D shear wave, um, which looks not only at the velocity, but it looks at the, the basic um, 
displacement curves that occur and they have to have a certain height, they have to have minimal noise and the calculation of the shear wave speed has to be of a certain high quality uh, for uh, the system. Um, and it is a uh, roadmap kind of uh, scale. Green is go, yellow is caution and red is stop. Um, so you can use that um, to determine if there's adequate shear waves. And in the majority of these cases of the softer blue cancers, the quality map will signal to you not to believe the shear wave data. However, uh, we for uh, a long time have used both strain and shear wave to evaluate masses. And then the image on the right is a strain image. Uh, and you can see in the same cancer that the lesion is much larger, which is the characteristics that we see uh, when we look at strain involving breast lesions. And um, you can uh, see that the we like to use a distance ratio that the lesion is 1.9 times larger on the strain image than it is on the B-mode image, uh, which again signals to us that uh, this is a malignancy. So by doing the combination of both strain and shear wave, uh, we can avoid this pitfall in, in shear wave imaging of the softer blue cancer. Um, so again, um, strain imaging on the left, in this case, a invasive ductal cancer uh, with a distance ratio of about two. Uh, breast is a very unique uh, tissue uh, for elastography uh, for uh, reasons that I don't fully understand. Benign lesions get smaller on uh, elastography and malignant lesions get larger. So we like to use what's called the distance ratio where we measure the distance on the elastography and divide it by the distance on B-mode imaging. And a ratio of a one or greater is suggestive of a malignancy and a ratio of less than one is suggestive of a benign lesion. On the right here, you have a shear wave imaging of the same cancer, and you can see that it has a very high stiffness value of 165 kilopascals. We use 60 kilopascals as our cutoff value. Um, and you can see we, with the, the 2D view, you can see that the uh, background fat is uh, nice blue and soft, and you can see the extent uh, of the uh, stiffness values uh, in the cancer and surrounding the cancer, making it look larger on the elastography. Um, we uh, just got a paper accepted in the Journal of Ultrasound and Medicine uh, where we did a meta-analysis on strain imaging. And in our practice, which we've used elastography uh, for breast imaging now for uh, 15 years, um, what we have found is that uh, we get very good results. And um, there are three methods of interpreting strain. Uh, the length ratio, the E to B ratio, like I've just discussed, there's a five-point color scale and strain ratio. When we looked at the literature, and you can see that the method that we use, the E to B ratio, has a sensitivity and specificity much higher than the other techniques. And more importantly, in yellow, the negative likelihood ratio is 0 0.03. And what that means is if you have a 50% pre-test probability, so a all 4B lesions, you can downgrade that to a 2% or BIRADS 3. Um, so we um, find that strain is very sensitive, um, but we have some issues with strain in benign lesions because it often blends with the background tissue and we have a hard time doing measurements. And that's where the addition of shear wave imaging comes to confirm uh, that the lesion is soft. So again, the advantages and disadvantages of strain and shear wave are opposite of each other. And the combination of the two is very powerful uh, in determining if a lesion is benign or malignant. So again, we do both strain on the left and uh, shear wave on the right and another invasive ductal cancer. And here you can see on the strain image, the ratio is 1.9, again, highly suggestive of a malignancy, as well as a kilopascal reading of 82, again, highly suggestive of a malignancy. So when we have concordance between both strain and shear wave, we feel very comfortable in calling the lesion either benign uh, or malignant. Again, we have that problem with the blue cancers or soft cancers, and again, those cases are always positive on strain. So again, adding strain is very helpful in those cases. But in addition, we now have the quality map for 2D shear wave, 
And on this image, the right is the velocity map, which shows us a very high stiffness values in the center of this cancer. And on the left, you have the quality map. And again, green is go, uh, yellow is caution, and red is uh, stop. So you can see in the areas that don't color code that they're yellow and there are other areas that are yellow. And this is telling you that when the computer looks at the displacement curves, which you normally don't see in the system, um, that they are of adequate height, that they are at, have very little noise and the calculation of the shear wave speed can be very good. So in some cancers that uh, appear blue, if you have a very bad quality map, you should consider that that probably is not a benign lesion, but actually a malignancy. And again, we like to use strain that helps to confirm that impression. Um, so again, uh, looking at um, the 2D shear wave, a benign lesion on the left. Uh, here we've gone to meters per second uh, with the 2.6 meters per second uh, in the lesion. Um, we use 4.5 millimeters as our cutoff value. And on the right, uh, using kilopascals, the system will allow you to do either or both, uh, that 94 kilopascals uh, in um, uh, that one area of that cancer that uh, confirms that this is a invasive ductal cancer. Um, again, we really like to use strain elastography. Our sensitivity is much better with strain than shear wave, but our specificity is much better with shear wave than strain when we look at our cases over the last uh, 10 years. So um, we like to do the combination of uh, both of them. So again, I think having the the side-by-side uh, -side display of both strain and shear wave, which is available on the system, is very helpful. And uh, shortly, I'll go over our algorithm that we use. We use both strain and shear wave uh, to determine uh, the characterization of, of the breast mass. Uh, Dr. Kinkle talked about uh, microflow, so I'm not going to talk about it. But it's another addition that, again, helps us uh, to characterize these lesions. Uh, here are just some other examples, uh, and I, again, Dr. Kinkle did an excellent job in describing uh, that technique. So again, uh, we feel we have increased confidence in combining both strain and shear wave elastography. Adding in microflow uh, also is very helpful. Um, in the future, we hope to add uh, the addition of ultrasound contrast, which is again available with the probe. Um, I must say that our uh, area under the curve using elastography is quite high. It's uh, probably about 98%. Um, so we don't know if the addition of ultrasound contrast is going to make a big impact uh, on this, although I think ultrasound contrast for following lesions that are getting treatment uh, would be very helpful. So what are the cutoff values? Um, we have not completed a formal study, uh, but based on their experience uh, with the system during its development, uh, for strain elastography, again, we like to use the E to B or elastography to B mode distance ratio. Less than one is benign, equal to or greater than one is malignant. You can use the five point color scale if you like. You can do the strain ratio. Uh, when Again, we use a cutoff value of 4.5. And again, you should always use fat as a reference when we're looking at breast. For the shear wave elastography, we use 4.5 meters per second, which corresponds to 60 kilopascals as our cutoff value. So how do we incorporate both strain and shear wave into breast imaging? So if both strain and shear wave are suggestive of a benign lesion, we have very high confidence the lesion is benign. The only false negative that we have seen is lymphoma. And this is usually a well-circumscribed, very hypochoic lesion with marked internal blood flow. So if we do have negative strain and shear wave, but the patient has a history of lymphoma or they, again, have a well-circumscribed uh, lesion with marked internal blood flow, we would consider biopsying that, uh, considering that it could be lymphoma. If both shear wave and strain are suggestive of a malignant lesion, we have very high confidence the lesion is malignant. Our false positives are mastitis, fat necrosis, and a few fibroadenomas. So if clinically the patient has mastitis, we consider treatment and short-term follow-up as opposed to biopsy. And if we have a mammogram that has calcification suggesting a fat necrosis, or the patient had recent surgery in that area, we may consider short-term 
follow-up as opposed to doing a biopsy. If the uh, strain is positive and the shear wave is negative, uh, you want to check the quality measure on the shear wave. And if it's poor, the uh, lesion is probably going to be malignant. Um, and in general, when we have this pattern, all these lesions will be malignant and need biopsy. Uh, and obviously, if it's a BIRADS 4B, 4C, or 5 lesion, we, they would be biopsied. If the strain is negative and the shear wave is positive, you need to consider that you may have added pre-compression when you did your shear wave, which gives you an elevated number. Um, you can either repeat the measurements confirming that you do not apply a lot of pressure, or you can check the stiffness of fat, which usually has uh, a, a shear wave speed of about 1.2 or 1.3 meters per second. Um, if shear wave is still suggestive of a malignant lesion, then we would do a biopsy, and obviously any 4B, 4C, and 5 lesion, we would biopsy. Um, thank you. Any questions? I think, Bertrand, you have done also really fantastic job, and we also received a question from the audience, and they ask us, are there any studies which already published some results on uh, shear wave imaging on the breast? Yes, there were multiple um, studies. The BR1 or BE1 study was published many years ago, um, and uh, again showed that there was an improvement using shear wave alone. Um, we have published a paper on it's called the Quality Measure, which came out in Radiology, I believe it was 2015, where we did both strain and shear wave, and we did shear wave without the Quality Measure and shear wave with the quality measure and showed that with the addition of the quality measure that the uh, sensitivity and specificity of shear wave uh, almost approached that of um, strain imaging. Okay, I think there's no more question from the audience, so many more questions. I mean, these uh, frequency, these products are very high frequency, and could you use even the high frequency for using shear wave imaging, or do you have to optimize with the lower frequency for doing shear wave imaging? Um, so you actually do not have the choice. The uh, system will pick the shear wave speed that's appropriate. So you have no control of that. Um, when you go to the shear wave mode, um, the system uh, automatically goes to what's best for the patient. So um, you don't have control. And obviously, uh, for the RFE pulse, I'm sure that they're using a lower frequency to generate the shear waves. And how time-consuming is this new technique will it fit with my daily work or do I need an additional five or ten minutes for the patient you know so in the past we've often had one system that did strain and one system that did shear wave so we were actually scanning the patient on two systems so now we have one probe that will allow us to do both strain and shear wave um, as well as as dr kinkle said big breast small breast so we can use one probe so we don't have to worry about changing probes. Um, I would say to do both strain and shear wave takes less than five minutes uh, once you uh, do the technique. Um, one thing I think that is very important, people have said that strain imaging has a very high uh, learning curve. And I think that's not true with the Phillips system because you don't need to do motion uh, up and down with the probe. You don't need to be doing this with the probe um, because it's so sensitive that just the patient's breathing is uh, enough to generate the um, stress to generate good strain images. So um, it's very easy. You just hold the probe very lightly on the breast, and you can do both shear and strain um, imaging at the again within a couple of minutes at most. Okay, I think there is no other questions from the audience. So thanks again, Richard, for your fantastic talk, and we will follow up with the next speaker.